H.P. Lovecraft once said, The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear, and the oldest and strongest kind of fear is the fear of the unknown. Seth, are you going to be recording this entire trip? You bet your buns I am. I want to be ready to record any discoveries we might stumble upon. I mean, guys, we might be the first people up here in years. It's just an old campground. I doubt there's anything up there beside cobwebs. I don't know, man. I'm with Seth. Anything is possible. Worst comes to worst, I'll just start making up ghost stories. Alrighty, so going around, we have the lovely, the kind, the Brandon. Hey, everybody. I'm Brandon. Thanks, Brandon. The girl with the stick up her butt is Erin. Aw, thanks, asshole. <laughs> Next up is Allie, the meme. You're a meme. And of course, last but not least in my heart is my true love, the apple of my eye, Mike. <laughs> what do I do? Just talk into the mic, fool. Hi, guys. Guys, can you pipe down? I'm trying to drive here. Okay, Mom. Don't make me turn this car around. Actually, wait. If we're turning this car around, can we go back to that 7-Eleven? I really need to pee. Really? You just went. What can I say? I drink a lot of water. If Mike's directions are right, then we should almost be there. Guys, I don't know if I can hold it that long. Oh, dear God. Yeah, I'm going to need that bottle. No, 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 no. Aaron, pull over, quick. Too late, everybody. Dude, are you seriously peeing in my mom's car? Nah, just kidding. I didn't pee in your mom's car. <laughs> Dude, oh, you're kidding. How am I friends with you? And here we are. Listeners, what we see before us is an extremely dilapidated summer camp. Truly, I wouldn't want to sleep in these cabins. In fact, it looks like one of the boys' cabins collapsed in on itself. Across the clearing, it looks like the girls' cabins are just off the shore of the lake. Hey, Mike? Yeah. We brought tents, right? I don't know about you, but dying in an old summer camp isn't on my to-do list for this week. So who's sleeping where? Well, Allie and I are sharing a tent, and then you three get a tent. Enjoy the guy tent, Seth. I take it back. Suddenly those abandoned cabins seem a lot better. Come on, Aaron, you can't make me room with these... these savages. Don't worry, Seth. I won't let Mike stink the tent up, says the guy who just Dutch ovened us all on the car right up. I mean, if you really wanted, you could sleep in the car. By myself? Do you know how cold I'd get? Is anything good enough for you? Yes, a queen-sized bed, warm hot cocoa, and a butler reading me bedtime stories. <laughs> You're such a pansy. Pansy and proud. You're ridiculous. But you love me anyway. So, where are you guys thinking of setting up the tents? I want to sleep next to the totem pole. What? Where's the totem pole? See it over there? Between the flagpole and the big bonfire pit? Ooh! Brandon, wait up! Hey, come back here and help us carry this shit. Nah, man, I'm free like the eagle. Sorry, we're eagles now. Caca! Caca! Tense up. Yay, progress! Would have been faster if somebody had helped. Seth and I were busy taking a spiritual adventure by becoming eagles, then bears, then hyenas, then sloths. But we did get a chance to explore the camp a bit. Did you know there's a headmaster's cabin behind the mess hall? Yeah, it was all locked up and stuff, but it seemed pretty cool. We should go check it out when it's not nighttime and full of ghosts. But now, we drink. Did you bring anything good? Does it matter? You drink it anyway. Fight me. What am I about to pour down my throat? Happiness. Depression. What? Friendship! Oh, God. Here's to our final summer together. You guys have been such great friends for the last four years, and hopefully we'll remain great friends for the rest of our lives. To a lifetime of friendship. Oh, that was god-awful. Was that your first beer, buddy? Keep drinking. I will, but first, it's story time. <clears throat> Founded in 1961, Camp Clarity was intended as a co-ed multi-purpose summer camp. It had various activities such as rowing, hiking, candle making, teepee construction, and team obstacle courses. Though after four years of operation, Camp Clarity was closed due to water contamination from a nearby mine. After the nearby mine closed in 1973, the United States Forest Service purchased the property to establish it as a ranger station. This too resulted as a failure and the campgrounds were left abandoned. In 2009, a local Colorado writer published a collection of short stories, one of which was about a fictitious curse that surrounded the land that the summer camp was built on. 
To this day, it remains abandoned, and no action has been set forward to tear it down. Great story. Now drink! You're really not letting me get out of this, are you? I'll make an alcoholic out of you yet. Dude, I wonder where the mines are. We could totally sneak in. I don't know if that's... Come on, man. Didn't you say the reason you're recording this was to document all the cool adventures we'd go on? Yeah, you're right. Anything for the listeners. I just don't want to be the first one in. So it's, uh, 2.42 a.m. and everyone is asleep, and I swore I heard something outside, so I'm going to go check it out. Let's see what's going on. False alarm. No monsters here, just a deer. Wow, it's nice out here. Maybe I should get out more often. Day two of our wonderful adventure at Camp Clarity. Guys? Guys, where's the breakfast? Seth, hurry. Come over here. I just got a huge fish. Okay, just a sec. Wait, where is everyone else? Hey, would you um, hand me the recorder? Uh, sure, why? <laughs> um, no reason. Ah! <laughs> oh my god, you mother liquor! <laughs> you alright? <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely awake now. You go back to sleep. Okay, now that I am dry and everyone is fed, it's time for our first adventure. All right, Brandon, what's up? The sky. I mean, what are we about to do? Continue participating in our mostly meaningless lives and making choices that have no real effect on the world. All right. Aaron, tell us what we're about to do. Uh... Come on, this isn't a calc quiz. Let's try that one more time. Allie, what are we doing, please? We're entering the mess hall. Like, literally right now. Damn, this place is deserted. Don't you mean dessert, Ed? <laughs> We're going to dessert you if you make a shitty pun like that again. <laughs> After we explored the mysteries of the mess hall, we moved on to the bunk rooms. Most of them were empty, save for the frames of bunk beds. We avoided the boys' cabins that had a caved-in roof, but it looked like a bunch of plants had started growing from the floorboard, so Allie took some artsy photos. Next up is what I've been looking forward to the most, the Headmaster's Cabin. Only problem is... It's locked. After much painstaking labor, we were unable to break into the Headmaster's Cabin until... Until we found the unlocked tool shed. All thanks to Allie. Of course, there wasn't any keys lying around, but Allie found a, uh, a... A crowbar. Yeah, a crowbar. If we're breaking in anyway, why don't we just use a rock? Please. Classier than a rock. Come on, let's open this thing up. I want to test out my new crowbar. Oh, your crowbar, huh? All right, five, four, three. Voila, door's open. Whoa, it's so vintage. Oh, snap, check out this bed. Hey, Seth, come check out this desk. What's up? There's a bunch of old newspaper clippings here. Grand opening, best camp... Hero Counselor Saves Drowning Camper. Oh, damn. This one is about a missing kid. What? Which one? This one. Tuesday, July 25th, 1972. Joseph, age 9, went missing the night before Camp Clarity's program was set to end. The rest of the children have been brought back into town, and the U.S. Forest Rangers have already begun searching the nearby woods. This one here says the kid was found, or I guess his body was found. They think he died of exposure, but the article says foul play might have been involved. Whoa, check out this old map. Seth, you'll probably want to see this. Let's see. It looks like a detailed map of the campgrounds and the surrounding areas. What's this? Oh, that's the mine. See, it's just down the trail. Now we have to go. Wait, isn't that where they found the body? Depressing news clips aside, the old map was cool and all, but the coolest thing we found was, drum roll please, an old cassette tape recorder with some blank cassettes. Approximately five hours worth of tape. Let me talk about the map. Okay, okay, sorry. So, on the map there's a bunch of hand-drawn symbols marking the nearby landmarks. There's an old mine and a ranger tower. 
There's also some highlighted trails, which just so happens that one of the trails go right past the abandoned mine. So we're going to hike, uh... Overlook Trail! The map is old, so I'm sure the path is mostly overgrown, but we should still be able to find it. I think it connects right to the campground. So, it's lunchtime. Typically, this would be an exciting part of any day, but it turns out that Brandon and Mike only brought hot dogs and white bread. So it looks like some responsible shoppers will have to take the 45-minute trip down to town tomorrow to buy some real food. <sighs> All right. Do we have everything? Flashlights, ropes, good shoes, carabiner, granola bars, flares, and a sense of adventure? We have flashlights, good shoes, and granola bars. I have a knife. I have one, too. I have my crowbar. And we probably won't need rope. It's a mine, not a cave. Caves and mine shafts are basically the same thing. Technically, mines are man-made caves, but sometimes they branch into or out from naturally forming caves. Does everyone have a sense of adventure? Uh, not me. Oh, and also, I was going to save these for the final night, but I think they might be more useful now. You brought glow sticks? Man, I love glow sticks! Yeah, one of you? Yes, please! Oh, can I do it? Sure. So, a few miles into our hike, and we found a side trail that leads up into the mine. So we followed it, and we have officially found the New Horizons Mining Company mine. Um, what else? Describe what it looks like. Okay, so the entrance is all boarded off, and there's caution tape crisscrossing the boards. Looks like a job for Mr. Sanchez the Crowbar. Uh, here, Seth. For the record, I am against this idea. Aw, Seth. You're gonna come down with us, right? Yes. Atta boy. All done. Wow, how utterly dark and terrifying it is down here. Aaron, you like spiders, right? Shut up. So, who wants to go first? Nose goes. Damn it. Just think of it like this. If you set off a booby trap, then you'll die saving all of us. Aw, just what I always dreamed of. Do you guys think there are any dead bodies down there? Ooh, maybe. You know what there is a lot of? What? <laughs> Spiders. I really hate you guys. So, we're about 20 minutes into the mine. The air is cold and musty and smells like dirt. So far, we've encountered a handful of spiders, but there's nothing Aaron screaming and flailing couldn't take care of. With all the flailing Aaron tripped, I was hoping she set off a booby trap, but it turns out it was just a rock. But then she fell onto some old boards, and they broke. Yeah, thanks for all the help, assholes. Love you, Aaron. So, anyway, the boards broke, and it turns out they were blocking a side passage. Honestly, I think we'd have all walked right past it if it wasn't for Aaron. So here we go. The slope is pretty steep, guys. Be careful. Yeah, we don't want Aaron tripping again. Seriously, you guys are the worst. I is that a light? So I'm not the only one seeing it? No, that's definitely a cage light. And there's a green metal door? Kind of looks like an old army bunker. So are we going to open it or what? Yeah, man, let's do this. Allie, crowbar, please. Yeah, sure. Guys, I don't know if a crowbar is going to help you. It's a metal door. So what should we do then? Say, open sesame, abracadabra, um... Kalatu, barata, niktu. Why not knock? Well, now what? Whoa, I didn't do that. It's an old door. It was probably just the metal unbending from... Okay, so I'm leaving. Yeah, man, me too. This place doesn't sit right with me. Allie, Mike, I'll stay here if you two do. I don't know, man. I'll do all the knocking. Fine. Mike? Do you even need to ask? See? Just a fluke, right? Okay, okay, that doesn't mean anything, right? L like I said, probably just the metal unbending. It has to be. Are you sure about that? I don't know if it's a coincidence. What if it's someone who needs help? Well, considering this place has been abandoned for upwards of 40 years, I wouldn't count on it. What if it's an animal trying to get out? Like a bear or something? I doubt that. We have emerged the smell of fresh air. 
About time. Brandon and I were just about to leave. Yeah, sorry. Things got weird down there. What happened? You all good? Yeah, nothing bad. Just a coincidence, I think. Did you guys explore any more of the cave? We went a little deeper into the cave, past the turn. It's caved in, so it looks like we've explored as much as we can. We should head back to camp before it gets dark. We decided we'd all take a week-long trip up to Lake Clarity to celebrate our last summer together. Mike, Allie, Aaron, and Brandon have been my best friends since freshman year, and in a few short months we were all heading our separate ways for college. I was planning on staying in Denver, but everyone else was flying far away. I host a podcast and thought it would be fun to bring some spooky content to my project and maybe capture some memories in the process. The camp was old, and truthfully, I didn't think we'd find anything at all, aside from maybe some old Boy Scout stickers, but I was hopeful. Lake Clarity is one of those places that only exists in horror stories. It's like Crystal Lake. We thought it was just an old summer camp that went out of business and never got torn down. We had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. Now please take me back to camp. You have no idea what's going on up there. The things we've seen. Seth, you need to tell us what happened to your friends. You heard the voices of Bear Omenson as Seth, Ben Ernst as Aaron, James Brunt as Brandon, Maddie Moore as Ali, Jacob Thorne as Mike, and Kristen Van Etten as Ranger Joan. Written and directed by Pacific Obadiah and Larissa Fleming, and edited by Pacific Obadiah, with help from Maddie Moore. Our music is provided by Its Teeth. You can find them on Spotify or Bandcamp. This show was brought to you by Midnight Disease Productions, with help from Met Media and Free Sound, where we've acquired most of our sound effects. For a full list of proper attributions and credits, please visit mymetmedia.com. There, you can also find additional information about the show, as well as any extras and behind-the-scenes content that we've been producing.